Hello everyone, welcome to session 15 of LTEC 654 Programming Games and Simulations. Now, it's session 15, so what does that mean? Well, it means it's December. And what does it mean that it's December? It means we're running out of time. And in fact, there's only two sessions left. So with that in mind, I want to talk a little bit about three different things. First up, a minor due date update. Here are the three deliverables for your game production project number two. You've already finished deliverable number one, but what I want to draw your attention to is that I'm extending the due date of deliverable number two. It was Friday, December 9th at 11.55 a.m., but I'm pushing that to give you an extra weekend so that it's due on Monday, December 12th at 11.55 a.m. Some of you will recognize that that's actually the same time as deliverable number three, post-project video reflection. All right, let's move on. The second thing that I want to talk about is accepting and learning from errors. Now, it's important to understand that errors are an important part of programming. It's very normal to encounter errors. And at first, those errors themselves are going to be super confusing. But over time, you're going to learn to read those errors. And eventually, you will stop making syntax errors, that means errors with what you type, and those errors will be replaced with logic errors. And those logic errors are going to require you to do some debugging. So what is debugging? Well, it's the process of finding and resolving problems within a program that prevents correct operation of the software, in this case, your games. So there's a famous anonymous quote that I want to share with you. Only half of programming is coding. The other 90% is debugging. That's my screed on errors. And I want to point you to a little bit of research on two kinds of novice programmers, stoppers and movers. Now, this research found that novice programmers classified as stoppers, when confronted with the problem or lack of a clear direction to proceed, they simply stopped. And they appeared to abandon all hope of solving the problem on their own. And the researchers concluded that students' attitudes to mistakes and errors are important. Those who are frustrated by or have a negative emotional reaction to errors are likely to become stoppers. I don't want you to be a stopper. What I want you to be is a mover. And these researchers found in con contrast to stoppers, some students were movers. And these are movers who are keep trying and experimenting and modifying their code. Movers use feedback about errors effectively and have the potential to solve the current problem and progress. That said, sometimes extreme movers who are not able to trace and track their program will make changes more or less at random with little effective chance of progressing. So I don't want you to fall into that extreme mover category, but ultimately we want you to be more on the mover side than the stopper side. Now, if you find yourself getting frustrated and you've tried everything you can think of and you're just kind of going in circles, then reach out to a classmate or reach out to me, as many of you have done, so that I can give you a boost and help you move forward. Now, this brings us to thinking a little bit about learning from common errors in Godot. And I know many of you have experienced these. So one of the most common errors is an indentation error. So it says parser error indented block expected. So what would cause that? Well, here's an example of a function in line six named ready, and it has one line of code in it, a print statement. But the problem, of course, is that line seven, which is highlighted in red, because that's causing the error, is not indented. And so Godot's trying to tell you, I was expecting an indented block of code. And so that's how that error is resolved. Another example is a classic, the invalid operands error. What the heck does that mean? Well, let's take a look. I've got my two-line function here, and all it's trying to do is print, hello, LTEX 654, today is day number, and then it includes a plus sign and the number 17. This error is caused by the fact that Godot is too stupid to recognize that all we want to do is print the number 17 instead of actually doing math. Godot thinks we want to do math because it sees a plus sign and it sees a number. But really, all we want to do is print. 
So how do we tell Godot to fix that? Well, we just tell Godot to treat the number 17 as a string. And we do that in line seven by simply wrapping it in the str, which is sort for string, and the parentheses. And that makes that error go away. Here's another classic, colon expected at the end of line. Here you can see I have a function with an if statement. Line seven is highlighted in red. And as the error suggests, all I was missing is just one character. What character? The colon at the end of the if statement. That's what that error means. Here's another one. The identifier, quote unquote, scene isn't declared in the current scope. What does that mean? Well, let's take a look at this example. In line seven, I have scene equals load, and I'm loading something out of my resources folder, and I'm creating an instance of it. Godot doesn't recognize the identifier or the variable scene. Why is that? Well, because I forgot that keyword var. I needed to tell Godot that scene is a variable. And so it complained it wasn't smart enough to figure out what I was trying to do. Here's another example. Too few arguments for a function called do some math. And it says it was expecting at least two arguments. So let's take a look at the code. Here we can see we have a ready function and it's manually calling the do some math function. However, when we look at line nine where the do some math function is declared, we see in parentheses it's expecting two arguments, A and B. Now because I didn't pass two arguments to the do some math function, it's complaining. So the way I would solve this issue is in line seven, I would say do some math and then I pass it to arguments. In this case, the number three and the, the number four. Another very common error is a null instance error. And you can see here in this line of code what's happening. In line seven, I've created my scene. I'm loading something out of the resources folder and I'm creating an instance of it. However, in line eight, I'm trying to add that scene as a child to body number two. Now notice Godot doesn't tell me where the error is, but it does tell me that it has to do with the function add child. And so the problem is, is Godot can't find the node named body two. And so it was saying this is a null instance. It's an instance of a node that doesn't exist. It's empty, it's null. And the solution is actually was a typo on my part. There was no node named body two. The proper name was body. And so I had to, I just had that simple typo and that's what that error was all about. So I just wanted to review some of those examples quickly to give you a taste for how to read those errors that I know you are encountering as you're working on your game production project too. Now, finally, I want to talk a little bit about how to manage complex strings in Godot. Let's take a look at why this might be useful. So take a look at this example. It's a simple program. I have three variables, person one, person two, and person three. And they're all equal to a different string. Person one is Peter, person two is Paul, person three is Mary. In my ready function, in line eight, I have a label named label and I'm setting the text property to be equal to, we are waiting for plus person one plus period. And so you've seen this type of thing before, this isn't new. We can imagine that the output is, we are waiting for Peter, period, because person one, that variable is equal to the string Peter. Super simple, nothing new here. Now, there are some things that we can do with strings. For example, we could say, we are waiting for plus person one dot to upper. The to upper method converts a string into all uppercase letters. And so the output here would be, we are waiting for Peter. And of course, there's the same thing where we could convert a string to lower. And the output here, we are waiting for Peter, all lowercase. Here's another example of what we could do. We could say we can combine a series of variables to create the string, we are waiting for Peter, Paul, and Mary. Now, what I wanna do is show you a slightly different way to work with complex strings. So one of the features of Godot is called format strings. And this is a feature that allows us to reuse text templates 
to create different but similar strings. So let's take a look at this code, lines eight, nine, and 10. So in line eight, this is something we haven't seen before. I have a variable called format string, and it's equal to, we're waiting for percent sign s period. So what is that percent sign s? That actually is, stands for a simple conversion. It's a placeholder. And what we can do in the next line of code, line nine, we can say that the actual string is equal to the format string plus a variable, person one. And so what we can do is assign our label the text actual string. And so the output would be, we're waiting for Peter. So essentially what we've done here is created a template string, and then we've told Godot what to plug into that template. In this case, we wanted to plug in the variable person one. And of course we could change, you can see here in line nine, I've changed it from variable person one to variable person two. And so the output here, even though the template was the same, the output is different. We're waiting for Paul. Now here's something we haven't seen. Notice that in the format string, we're waiting for percent sign %s, percent sign %s, and percent sign %s. So we have those three placeholders. And then in the actual string, we're saying Godot use that template named format string and populate it with person one, comma, person two, and person three. And so the output would be, we're waiting for Peter, Paul, and Mary. So you might be wondering, well, okay, this is interesting, but what about numbers? How about working with numbers? And this is where these format templates come in really handy. So take a look at this. I have a variable called value one, and it's equal to a float. In other words, a number with a decimal value. So 1.2533. And of course I can say we are waiting for, and I have to tell Godot treat that number as a string. So it doesn't do the math. And here is the output. What we can do is do the same thing using format strings. So here I have, we're waiting for, and then percent %s, and I get the same output. This is exactly what we've seen before. Now let me show you a little bit of an advanced version. Now take a look at line six here. We're waiting for percent dot to f. That is the placeholder now. So you're probably wondering, what is that to f? Well, this is a way to be more specific with our formatting. So before the f, we're setting the precision of our number to be two decimal places. And f is a decimal number in Godot. And so take a look at the output. Even though the value of variable value one was 1.2533, we're only getting two decimal places. We're waiting for 1.25. Now I wanted to show this to you because many of your projects involve money. And so rounding like this can be very convenient. Here's another example of using a formatting string. This is our last example. You can see the format string in line eight. The price of placeholder is placeholder 2f placeholder per unit. And so what my actual string ends up being, the price of vanilla is 5.33 gold coins per unit. You can reuse that template multiple times and replace it with whatever ingredient you want or whatever ingredient price or whatever currency name you want. Okay, everyone, I know that was a lot to digest, but some of you are ready for working with more complex strings, and I thought this would be helpful for you. We're out of time for today. Have a great week, and I'll see you in Kansas.